Hello, welcome to episode two of Brews and Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about Mike Cernovich, creator of Gorilla Mindset, and Spots, the Tiki Weissa from Off Color Brewing. We want to be sure you get a nice close look at the bottle here. Very nice artwork. Let's, uh, let's just go ahead and open this up. If I hold up to the light here, you see that very, very light straw-like color. It is a sour, but it's not quite a goza, so that's good. According to the bottle, this has passion fruit and grapefruit peel in it. Yeah, you can, uh, you can definitely taste those. I believe this is made with lactobacillus. That's the kind of uh, yogurty taste to it. Anyway, as we're wending our way through that, let's go ahead and talk about one Mike Cernovich and Gorilla Mindset. First of all, I wanted to talk about pickup gurus generally and two specific techniques that they mention often in their various pitches. One is called negging and the second is called mirroring. So we're gonna go over one first and then the other. Um, One's, one's, a bit, one's a bit more effective than the other, I would say. We'll explain why. First of all, uh, negging. Negging is the idea that when you're dating a person, especially soon after you meet them, you're supposed to pick out some minor negative thing about them, like that they dye their hair or something, and criticize them about it. Basically, the idea is that people are thinking about dating like it's a marketplace. You're going through the marketplace, and some people are a bit better than you, and some people are about as good as you are, and some people are worse than you. And so if, during your march through this marketplace, someone isn't, isn't treating you especially well, or seems unimpressed by you, that gives you the indication that they're actually a good deal for you because they're better than you in the marketplace. Is it a shame that we have to think about dating as a marketplace? We have to think about dating in the same way we think about buying a car or something like that. Well, yes it is, it is a shame, but in a way it is like that. The real question is, does the fact that some of romantic life is bullshit, and some of it is, does that poison the well? Does that mean that it's all worthless? Well, I don't think so, because the truth is that nothing in life is perfect, and if you don't scrounge up the salvageable parts, the parts that actually do mean something and are worthwhile, then you're gonna be left with nothing. The problem with negging is that while it may initially give the other party the impression that you are, in fact, better than you are, that your place in the marketplace is higher than it actually is, unless the person you're dating is very, very stupid, like, so stupid that it's going to be difficult to live with them, then they're probably going to figure out your real worth eventually, and then you'll have to reckon with that. Before we move on to mirroring, I think it's worth talking about what is it? What is it that these human beings are looking for in a dating partner? A man or a woman? Because it's really about the same. The things that they are looking for are more similar now than they ever have been before. Because men and women are more similar now than they ever have been before. They're, they're things that are hard to get, but there's really only three of them, I think. They want someone who is beautiful or handsome. You'll have to pick one. They want someone who is wealthy or at least employed in some capacity. And third, they want someone who has a good personality. And what exactly a good personality is, is uh, actually a fairly complicated issue and one we'll talk about later. Let's move on to the, uh, the second common pickup artist technique. This one is called mirroring. Now, if you don't know what this is, basically what you do is you listen to whatever the other person is saying and you repeat it back to them in the form of a question. So example, if the person says, I went to Tucson last week, you would say back to them, oh, so you went to Tucson last week. And then you might ask them a follow-up question about that. And then you will repeat back whatever they said in the form of a question and maybe add a little something. I have to say, I have tried this on dates before and it works surprisingly well. You would think that people would pick up on what you were doing pretty quickly, but they actually don't. The reason for this, I think, is that most people are so lonely and people pay attention to what they say so rarely 
that if you even pretend to pay attention to, to what the other person is saying, then you're one step ahead of everybody else, basically. The problem, of course, is that you must eventually actually listen to them. Again, it'll take a long time. It'll take a long time before they figure out that you're not actually saying anything. You're just being an echo chamber. But eventually they'll figure that out, and at this point you'll have to listen to all about their boring family and their job and, you know, all the nonsense that goes into being a regular person. I am married now, as you can see from the wedding ring, but I'm, I myself, believe it or not, used to have some trouble getting to girls in my younger days. And I was trying to think about if I could, if I could communicate one bit of wisdom to my younger self, or clear up a misconception that I had during my younger days, what would that be? And I, I finally came up with what I think is the most important thing to understand about dating. And the thing that I didn't understand when I was younger. This is that I was always confused about why girls seem to be going for guys who seem so much more boring than me and seem to have so much less personality and to be less interesting and less special. Here is the secret. No one is looking for anything special. They're not. Not men, not women. If anybody was looking for anything special, 90% of people wouldn't wind up getting married. The truth is, almost everybody I know is in a relationship. Most of these people aren't funny or interesting at all, the men or the women, and people love them anyway. Another piece of advice I would say is focus on what you can change. You can't make the opposite sex less shallow or less greedy, but you can go to the gym and you can make more money. Now let's move on to the gorilla mindset specifically. Is that the best ape mindset in terms of your dating strategy? Is a gorilla mindset preferable to say a chimpanzee mindset or an orangutan mindset? Gorillas, as we know, are the second most intelligent species after humans. Though they're quite a bit less intelligent than humans, I don't know that it is in fact the best idea for we humans to be patterning our behaviors after the other great apes, we'll have to think this out for ourselves. I feel that our friend Mike Cernovich may have misunderstood something when he claims that the gorilla is a highly dominant animal. The truth is that only the silverback, only the alpha male, is dominant. The other gorillas are submissive to him. Chimpanzees, on the other hand, are closest living relative, live in somewhat more complex societies, multi-male, multi-female societies. There is a dominance hierarchy within chimpanzee society as well. It's usually led by a dominant male. However, the dominant male in chimpanzee society may not be the physically strongest. He may be the most political and most manipulative. But to turn to the last of the great apes, not counting Bigfoot, of course, we arrive at the orangutan mindset. I think that the orangutan mindset is in fact superior to the gorilla mindset for purposes of dating. <coughs> Excuse me. Orangutans are less social than the other great apes. The only real significant bonds that occur in orangutan society occur between mothers and children. Males have non-overlapping ranges and don't typically interact with other males. The truth is that most orangutans spend most of their time alone, and they seem pretty happy that way. There's actually an Ursula K. Le Guin story called Solitude, which kind of shows a human beings who have adopted an orangutan-type society, in a way. It's in a collection called The Birthday of the World, so uh, check, check that out in between Gorilla Mind setting if you get the chance. To return to the conversation about negging, one of the reasons that giving someone a very slight insult initially will actually make you seem more attracted to them is that it makes it seem as if you can live without them. And nothing is more attractive to other people than someone who actually doesn't need them. If you can really continue to be happy on your own, regardless of what happens in your life, romantically and otherwise, if you can have that level of stoicism, 
then you should be set in good stead for the rest of your life, no matter what happens. That is the message that you should be sending to your potential uh, romantic engagements. And it's even better if that message can actually be true. I guess to, uh, to conclude with some reviews for these brews and uh, Gorilla Mindset too. Mike Cernovich does not understand gorillas. He doesn't understand chimpanzees. He doesn't understand orangutans or siamangs or gibbons or anything like that. So I'm gonna give him a two out of 10. This beer, you know, it's only 4%, was pretty light, pretty refreshing. I definitely recommend pretty much everything from Off Color. Their beer always has a very unique, kind of uh, natural taste to it, and that's why I recommend it. And so this one particularly, hmm, I'm gonna give this a seven and a half, seven and a half out of 10. We'll see you next week on Bruiser Reviews.